It's over opinionated. Hello everybody, welcome back to Over Opinionated. This is going to be only a spiritual episode as we start to transition more into a spiritual, biblical podcast. With that being said, we're still going to cover politics because I think that Christians should be involved in politics and I think politics are very important and I think especially at the state level. But I've had this on my heart and I was I was really praying and wondering what my what my spiritual topic should be for this episode. And it was between this and another topic that I will talk about at a later episode. I'm not gonna spoil it. But um this is something that a lot of people Christians and non-Christians deal with and everyone will more than likely deal with this at some point in life with that being said some people have it more than others um but what I'm talking about is how we deal with depression and anxiety in a biblical way many of us struggle with depression for many different reasons One of those could be for the loss of a loved one, a bad situation at home, school, or work. Um, And it could be for a variety of reasons. Also, you can have um, biological depression, which is caused by a chemical imbalance. And if you do, definitely talk to a doctor. I'm not a doctor and I'm not a psychiatrist, but... um, chemical depression is real and we have the science that can help that it might not get rid of it completely but we can help try to address the problem more so don't just say I'll pray it away if you are a diabetic you're not going to just say I'm a diabetic I'm going to pray away to diabetes God's gave us modern medicine we can pray and take medicine if needed and only if needed. We don't want to abuse medicines either. Um, But modern science is not in conflict with Holy Scripture. Not anything that I have seen as long as it is done to help. Actually, one of the gospel writers was a physician or a doctor for his day. That was Luke. Um, And I'm Maybe he wouldn't be the same as a doctor today, but he definitely had something in the medical field. With that being said, let's go. Um, Let's talk about depression a little bit. Uh, Like I said, everyone has it. We're just now getting to a world where it's more acceptable to talk about. We used to live in a world where if you cried... In public, or if you showed weak, it showed weakness. People thought that was weak, or if you were upset, that showed weakness. Men are never supposed to cry. At least that's what society has said. And I understand you don't want to cry at the drop of a hat. I also understand that you don't want to seem weak. But our Lord Jesus cried and I don't know of a tougher individual that's ever been on this planet than Jesus who came down and died for our sins voluntarily he volunteered to die for our sins and I don't know a tougher man than that and he cried he cried in front of people So don't ever think that you're not a man 
because of a moment of intense weakness. Not because of a moment of intense emotion. That doesn't make you weak. We all go through these things. And in the Bible, we see, we read about a few characters that deal with depression. And um, one of those characters is King David. King David is such an interesting character. He has so much ups and downs in God. He is the one of the most emotional men. When you read about the Bible, he probably is the most emotional man in the Bible. He wrote the majority of the book of Psalms, which is filled with the ups and downs, emotional highs and emotional lows. We see a man that is after God's own heart, but we also see a man that is trembling in sorrow. We also see a man who sinned and begged for God's forgiveness after he was anointed to be king. After he had a relationship with God, he committed a horrible sin after his own lust and slept with Bathsheba. And when they found out that Bathsheba was with child, David called up Uriah. To, and tried to get him drunk and to sleep with his wife. But Uriah was an honorable man. And he would not sleep with his wife while his fellow countrymen were out fighting for Israel. So David sent him back and sent notice that they should leave Uriah out in front of the battle. Abandon him and make sure that the Philistines could kill him and that right there is murder uh, now you, it might be murder by a different degree David's own hands didn't kill him but his orders did kill him and um but God forgave David he was angry at David over his sin but God forgave David and still he used him uh, and sometimes, listen, sometimes depression, and this is when we get the harder thing out of the way, sometimes depression can be because of our own sin. Now, that's not what I'm saying most depression is. That's not what I'm saying chemical depression is. But sometimes if we are caught in our own sin, like King David was in that situation, when we are in a sin, God will convict us and that will put a depression on us but we can just cry out to God for forgiveness and he will forgive us just like King David was forgiven and God loved and used King David there was punishment there was correction but God still loved and forgave King David but King David also went through depression that was not because of his sin that was not his fault. We live in our human bodies that are made out of flesh and bone. God made them perfect. But when Adam sinned, we went from being perfect to being imperfect. There was a hole that needed to be filled. We, met, we went from being whole to being nothing without God. So sometimes our, I think our depression comes from, uh, well, obviously it comes from the sin and fall of Adam and Eve. But think about it. In the garden, man was whole. We were happy. We were everything God wanted us to be. But in our rebellion, in our sin, when Eve and Adam ate the apple, that put a curse on all mankind in Adam's fall we sinned all so that put a distance between us and God and that also gives fruit to depression because we are no longer the whole person God made us to be and uh, sin also I mean I 100% believe sin is the reason for sickness as well so it would definitely be a reason for mental sickness as well 
because before we sinned in the garden there was no death for human beings for people that were made in God's image so after we sinned in that day we died spiritually now God can redeem us he can make us feel better he can make us feel more whole but that doesn't mean on this earth that our bodies will ever be whole we are going to get a new body in the new heaven and the new earth that God creates and he will make everything perfect again by his son's blood Jesus who came down and died for us Jesus who is the new Adam the perfect Adam who was sinless who was born without sin and in him we are made new and born again in a state of sinlessness um, and I went on a little bit of a rant there but I just want to uh, King, uh, go back to King David King David had all emotion when we we read the book of Psalms. King David is so emotionally sad at times. And sometimes he is so overjoyed with victory and joy. Um, I want to read you a psalm from King David. It will be, um, I'm going to be reading out the New International Version. This is Psalms chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. I wore out my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fall because of all of my foes. He was sad because of all of his accusers, his foes. And you got to realize that God anoints King David, but King David doesn't take the throne yet. Because King Saul is still in charge. So David goes into hiding. And Saul is searching the countryside trying to kill David. But David is a man after God's own heart. Even when he had the opportunity to kill Saul and take the throne. He said, I'm not going to kill God's anointed. I'm not going to kill who God has put in authority. God will pan out all things and God left Saul and went to King David because King David had a heart after God here he is just a shepherd boy who killed a giant <laughs> who became the greatest king except Jesus in the history of Israel he was so depressed but God loved him God helped him he was depressed because he had his countrymen looking to kill him and he was in hiding that was not his fault it was the situation he was in I want to read you about Job Job is a great story about how God can use us in horrible times Satan went to God in the book of Job, you can go and read it. I'm giving a recap. And he said, God, look at your servant Job. You've made him rich with livestock and children. I can make him sin against you. Just allow me to go kill his children. And go kill his livestock. And he'll curse you. He'll curse you and die. Because that's why he loves you. That's why he's righteous. Is because the things he said... Now, God did not, now some people will say this is cruel of God to do. God did allow the devil to do this. But God was using the devil's evil for his glory. God did not do this to Job. God did not afflict Job. The devil did. God allowed the affliction to happen. And a lot of times in our life, God will allow afflictions to happen. But the devil went down, he killed seven of Job's sons, three of his daughters. He killed all his livestock, which was his livelihood. He, he was rich. 
his friends come to Job and they just dog him. They say, this is God's judgment on Job. This is happening because Job was sinned and all of these things. But Job was pure before God. Now, did Job have sin in his life? I'm sure he did. We all do. But to scripture, they said he was perfect before God because he loved God. He, he even said he made a covenant with his own eyes not to look at a woman with lust. This is a man that is holy. This is a man that loves God. But yet he is in such anguish. Think about it. He lost all his children, all his livestock. Forget about the livestock. Forget about the money, which is important. We have to have money. We don't want money being the God of our lives, but money is a tool that we have to use for our currency, okay? Um, but he forget about the money. He lost all of his children, seven sons, three daughters. His friends come, and they just talk awful about him. Saying that this was from this was from God, it was His judgment, and it wasn't a suggestion either. His wife goes out to Job and says, "Job, look at everything that has happened to us. You should just curse God and die." The devil goes and flicks Job's skin, making him sick with bumps, but Job does not curse God. Now I'm not saying he was sinless in this, but the Bible does say he was perfect, meaning he was with love of God. Now, some would say he did say something that was sinful toward God. But imagine all those afflictions. My question is, could you be sinless before God in that? I don't believe I could. I pray that God would make me strong as Job. But I believe in my weakness and my flesh that I would, I might would have cursed God. Now, I think God would forgive me, okay, because God is love, and God will forgive someone who is generally repentant. But I would also run to God in that moment of crisis. And just like a child, if any of you that are parents, sometimes that kid says, I hate you, and then that sometimes, and then right after that, he gives you a big hug and kiss, and he's so scared, he wants his mom or dad, okay? I'm not saying it's okay to curse God. It's not. But I'm saying how many of us could withstand losing seven children and three, uh, seven sons and three daughters. That is awful. All his children. But Job, but God questions Job. Um, he said, answer me, prepare yourself like a man. And I'm going to read you one of the questions. Because it's a whole list of questions. And it starts at chapter 38. And it goes on for a few chapters. But I'm going to read you just a couple of questions God asked Job. This is Job chapter 39 verse 26. Does the hawk take flight by your wisdom and spread its wings to the south? Do the eagle soar at your command and build its nest on high? It dwells on a cliff and stays there at night. A rocky crag is its stronghold. And he asks several naturistic questions about animals and nature. Is it you that feeds the fawn? Do you put um, a hook in Leviathan's nose and drag him? Okay, God is... Why, and why does God ask all these questions? It's for a few reasons. God is showing Job how big he is and that his plan is bigger than ours. And he's also saying this to give Job a comfort that he serves a mighty God and that God controls all things. He is the God of nature. God can tell a mountain to move and it will move. He can tell an ocean to appear and it will appear. He made matter out of nothing. He made time and space out of nothing. He made the universe out of nothing. Not just our planet, but all the planets. Not just our galaxy, but all the galaxies he made. He hangs the stars on nothing. The universe is 
expanding continuously and we don't even know if it ends <laughs> this is a huge God my God is a huge God and he is telling Job I'm big enough for you I control all things okay there is evil in this world but it doesn't come close to my power and my glory I am the maker of all the universe. I put the stars in the sky. I lay the, the earth's foundations on nothing. It is a... We think about this. Our planet. Our planet. Was the only planet we know that has intelligent life. Maybe there's others out there. But we don't know of any others out there right yet. We're a ball full of water with a little bit of land we are the perfect distance from the sun not too close that it's so hot it couldn't support our life and not so far away that it's as cold and look at the stars in the sky those are suns billions of light years away <laughs> look at the James Webb telescope it's beautiful and the pictures it takes and if only a fool in their heart can say, there's no God. God made all of this. And God blessed Job. He restored him. He condemned his friends for being jerks. And then Job prayed for his friends. For their forgiveness. That's how good of a, a man Job was. Um, and then God bless Job. We're going to read the end of the story. This is Job chapter 42. I'm actually going to let the Bible app or the U version read this. Job chapter 42. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. After the Lord had said these things to Job... He said to Eliphaz the Temanite, I am angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. So now take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you according to your folly. You have not spoken the truth about me, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Naamathite did what the Lord told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes, and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters, and everyone who had known him before, came and ate with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him over all the trouble the Lord had brought on him, and each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a 1,000 yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. The first daughter he named Jemima, the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapuk. Nowhere in all the land were there found women as beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived a hundred and forty years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. And so Job died, an old man and full of years. So Job died an old man and full of years. And God 
blessed him. He restored everything the devil took away from him. And he forgave Job's friends after Job prayed for them. So Job prayed for his friends that were jerks to them. Also, good message. Sometimes your friends can be jerks. And you got to get good friends. Okay? So don't do all the wrong things to make all the wrong friends. If you have to beg someone to be your friend, they're not your friend. Okay? Even if you only have one good friend, that's better than a ten fake friends, okay? Don't live your life for the approval of other friends. Okay, the life... I remember there was a show, and I really liked it growing up, called That 70s Show. And I always remembered I wanted a group of friends like that to connect with. And I surrounded myself. I had a few good friends. I'm not saying all my friends were bad. But... I went down the wrong road of trying to please other people and trying to have a good friendship that, and I just, I loved people and I loved those guys and I still do, but I would have went to hell and back for them and they wouldn't do much for me. Most of them. There's a couple, okay, there's a couple that would have. So, but please, um, don't, I, and this is a rant, this is a side rant, okay? Don't do whatever you can to make a friend, okay? Don't do whatever. Don't sin to make a friend. Don't sin to keep a friend. Your first friend is Jesus, and he will love you, and he will be with you, and he is enough, okay? Um, but that's just a side rant. Um, make good friends. Make good friends. And uh, don't do anything bad to have or keep a friend that would hurt your relationship with God. Not worth it. Not worth losing the sleepover. Not worth wanting the fantasy of the 70s show basement. We're all, okay? A few people have that, but not a ton. Have a good relationship with your Holy Father. Okay, I want to move to Second Corinthians. And um, this uh, passage is a, about the Apostle Paul that was struggling with a certain thing but we don't know exactly what it was I've heard people say that it was he was getting blind it was blindness and I've heard other things I've heard people think that this was a certain sin that Paul uh, struggled with and I used to believe that for a while but I don't know exactly now maybe it was a sin he was struggling with it could have been it could be depression too okay um it could be blindness it could be an illness um paul is more than likely in prison uh, when he's writing this I, i'm pretty sure i could be wrong with that but okay this is starting at ver this is second corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 or because of these surprising great revelations Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conflicted, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Now, this is probably not about depression, but but Paul prayed three times, and this is a very holy man, and God responded, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. That's an attitude we need to take when facing this, because a lot of people with clinical depression that doesn't mean they're crazy. People try to make people out as uh, awful and crazy. No, it means they were born with a sickness. Okay? That doesn't mean they're stupid either. There's a lot of people that had depression and have depression that are very wise and very knowledgeable. Um, I believe I've heard, a, and I could be wrong, a rumor that the great, uh, that the great pastor... Charles Spurgeon suffered with depression, and this is a very good man of God. 
Um, so, but we need to take this attitude, even though we might have this thorn in our flesh, which is depression or anxiety, if you're struggling with it, God's grace is sufficient for you. Embrace that. Be with that. And I, there's a prayer that I have been saying now, and I've heard someone say it, and it really stuck with me. God, if you rise me up on the wings of these eagles, may it be for your glory. If you give me everything in all richness and all greatness, if you make me great, it, let it be for your glory. And if you ground me to the ground, if you pound me into the ground and devastate me where I have nothing and I have all the eels and the iniquity and punishment on me, may it be for your glory. And when we say this prayer, we're saying, let all things be done for God's glory glory okay if i'm if i'm high in stature or if i'm low in stature if i'm sad or if i'm happy may i may everything be done in god's glory may i be able to glorify god through him because i can't do it by myself no matter what situation i'm in i just went through something really traumatic a few months ago and god has helped me so much and everybody, almost everybody has to go through this in life. But I lost my mom uh, the day after Christmas. She passed away. And I 100% I believe and have faith and, and have a good conscience, a good feeling in my heart that she is in the presence of God. She is in heaven. She was a saved believer. Not perfect, but I'm glad that you don't have to be perfect to go to heaven you have to have a perfect savior. But she was struggling for the last six months of her life. She had a, I'm not going into all the details, but she had an accident and um, to do with her diabetes. Um, and it, it, it really messed with her and she had to have help and caretakers. And, um, she lived in a nursing home the last little bit, and I was working on getting, trying to get her out there, and out of there, and trying to get her the help she needs to to live, um, with some help. But uh, un unfortunately, she didn't make it, and I, and I wondered to myself, why, why would God let her suffer for that six months period, and not just take her home when the accident occurred? But I heard so many stories of so many nurses telling me how my mom blessed them because she was singing prayers, singing, she was singing praises to God, she was praising God, she was praying. I know that when she was in the nursing home, she made a friend and she gave that friend her Bible. And that just gives me great encouragement. Um, to think that her last days and she gave glory to God and helped those nurses encourage them and we don't know who even the seeds those seeds that have been planted might still help the kingdom today that's something I'll never know but it's God's glory and I went through a lot of depression losing my mom and, and I still struggle with that Every day I miss her. But I know she's in heaven. I know she's in heaven. And God and my lovely wife Rachel has helped me through this. And we have to take comfort in God's holy word, the Bible, at these hard times. And we've got to take comfort in Jesus' loving arms. And asking the Holy Spirit to help us in these hard situations and knowing that this world is not forever but we will go to a new world and we will be reunited with our loved ones in Christ and we will be reunited with our Heavenly Father that is our hope this world will fade it will go away and we will one day be reunited with our loved ones and with Jesus that gives me great hope. 
I'm going to read you a few verses from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, starting in verse 31. Do you now believe? Jesus replied, A time is coming, and its fact has come to you, will be scattered each to your own home. You will leave all, you will all leave me alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. Verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I overcame the world. And I'm sorry for um, stumbling over my words there. But Jesus said, take heart, I have overcome the world. You're going to have troubles in these worlds, that's what Jesus said. Take heart, I overcome it. And in him we're overcomers. And we have a new world that we will go to with King Jesus. Amen. I'm going to leave you with one more Bible verse. And this is going to be our uh, verse of the day. This is our Bible verse of the day. Psalms 34, verses 17. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And save those who are crushed in spirit. Let's read that last part. The Lord is close to the broken hearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So God cares. God cares when you are in your bedroom and your bed's full of tears. When you're in your car and your bed's full of tears. When you took a break from work. If you're in the bathroom or in a closet, or you shut the door to an office, or or if you're in a classroom, it doesn't matter. God sees your affliction. He sees your heartbreak. Pray to Him. Pray to Him. And trust in Him. And Jesus overcame this world. Okay? I'm not saying it's easy. It's not easy. But God is here with you. And He loves you. And um, so pray to him. And first of all, if you're not saved, get saved. Don't wait. Don't wait. He wants you in the family, and so do I. Thank you all for listening to this podcast. Um, I'm working really hard on getting a lot more things set up. I'm working hard to get our YouTube set up eventually so we can put out the interview I had with Jason Ballard and you can see both of our faces in the interview um, through the Zoom interview I did with him um, You and hopefully we can get a, a format going where you can listen to the podcast on YouTube and maybe one day I'll start filming all of it right now I'm not filming myself do the whole podcast um, but if you prefer YouTube to Spotify or something hopefully we get that up there we are also going to start a blog, um, and we will be writing some opinionated blogs, and just stay in touch. If Please spread this word of the podcast. I want to get the message of Jesus out there. I want to talk about politics, too, and how Christians should be involved, but I don't ever want to put politics above God or Jesus, because Jesus is king. Christ is king now and forever, and he's coming back. And um, I'm very thankful to be in that number, not because of anything I did, but because of what he did for me. I don't deserve to go to heaven. I've been a hypocrite a lot of my life, as we all have. And I'm thankful for his blood and his salvation and his calling on my life. And guess what? You can have that too. Everyone has a calling on their life once they get saved. you just got to find out what it is. God loves you and you can be saved but please spread the word of the podcast if you feel like you'd like to give financially there is options for that but it's not expected because I know that things are hard but I did want to leave an avenue I'm not doing this podcast for money I'm not making money on this podcast but if you want to give money so I can introduce more things into the podcast and have a better equipment 
for it. It is um, the way you can give is go to www.patreon slash overopinionated679.com. The O and overopinionated is capitalized. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, on Facebook, we're just over opinionated. You can look on it for the pages. Type up over opinionated on pages. Our Twitter handle Twitter handle is over opinionated with a one as the second um, as the second I and over opinionated. Um, or you can go follow me on Twitter at nrv guy seventy nine and. Um, uh, it'll lead you there, but I want to give a big thank you to my wife for helping me with this podcast so much and her loving support. I want to thank Jesus, and I want to thank my listeners. Even though we're sm- a small podcast, it doesn't matter. Um, my my grandpa has a small church, but he still goes and preaches every Sunday because if this podcast helps one person in their spiritual life, just one, then it's a success. If this podcast gets one person saved to God, it's a success, and I pray that one day it can. And if this podcast helps out one person, that's all I need. Um, But God bless you all. Stay vigilant, pray, um, stay up to date on the news, and diversify your news sources, read a little bit from the left and the right but don't be consumed with the news because jesus is king god bless you all and i hope to see you at the next episode